The Red Devil Spay. There you go. Now, basically, there's a fly in the Usher called the Red Devil, and this is the tube fly version. And you can see why this is this. Well, hence it's called the Red Devil Spay because of that. But it's quite easy and re reasonably easy to tie. Now, who I'm using? This is a Alec Jackson size three. Now you could use a Salar if you want. Uh, it's a good substitute with it. The Alec Jackson's a very strong hook. Uh, we're simply going to start with thread, about a millimetre from the eye. Now the thread I'm using is a UTC thread in 70 and fluorescent fire orange. And uh, for the tag, I'm going to be using a gold holographic tinsel. It's a large, it's much easier to use a large. So we tie this in the way down. Make sure it's well tied in. Now I'm also going to use the thread as part of the tag. So nice and bright. Now take the thread down until basically when you let the bobbin go, it should be in line with the point of the hook. Take it up about say three millimeters or so. Form the first part of your tag with the gold tinsel. Catch it in. And then Tie it down, but use the measure that next 3mm or so with the cut and then form second part with the thread going down and back up. And then we have to protect this. You can either tie it, put finish off and varnish it or you can use a UV resin. It's just a light version. I'm just going to spread it all the way around. Just using my dubbing needle. It's amazing how far this stuff goes once you put it on. There we go. And then it's a matter of setting the resin with the torch. Should we do it all the way around? Now I'm not going to put a tail on this fly. So you can do it. I'm going to tie in. Now I'm using a golden pheasant skin dyed red. And this is one of the breast feathers, the large ones, which are very good for space style hackles. Now, depending on where you want it to start, now I'm going to use a micro straggle for the body. Now if you want it to start at the bottom, I mean, if it's a long fibres first and then it gets shorter. Depending how long the hackle is, how good the feathers are, I would say depending on where you actually tie it in. Uh, I, like this feather here, looking at it, I'd probably get a good distance. So what I'm going to do here, first, I'm going to tie in the straggle. Now, I'm going to use that as a measure. There's a measure there. So, I'm going to tie in the straggle at that point. Now this is a fluorescent, dyed fluorescent red and it's got a gold and UV straggle or fibre coming through it. Now that's my measure and all I do is nice and tight take this up to that point and across the thread nice and tight so make sure it does not going to move and then basically because I'm using the right colour of thread you'll not see that Tie in then the hackle. I'm going to tie it in by the tip. It's going to, it's a good side facing myself. And then I'm going to fold the tip back, right up against the, the straggle. And take this up to the point where I want it to. Basically I've got a throat hackle to tie in and then the wing, so you've got to give yourself plenty of room. Now I'm going to fold the hackle just by holding the fibres back and then winding up like a basically a ribbon but the opposite way I wind my thread and any material that I'm going to rib the fly with just take it up now you get to this point here now I can get a good turn here 
with this material. You there we go, at that point there. And then come across your thread over the back. Keep it sure that the hackle's tight. And then zigzag, do a turn onto the, th the hackle stem and a turn onto the actual hook. And then trim it away. Then I'm going to lift this up, lifts out. Just bring it to like 90 degrees from the, the hook shank. Now because I've wound towards myself with the hackle, it means when I wind the straggle up through, be okay, if we don't catch too much, too much of it in. When I wind it through, it's catching it in. It's actually protecting it, and it makes for a very strong fly if you do this. It's, it's a bit fiddly at this point, but even if you do catch in a few fibres, with the, the Velcro, which I'm going to use next, you can actually pull it back out. Uh, it will pull, pull the fibres through. Nice and tight. Keep going. Just before you come up with the last turn, draw back the hackle. And then come up with the thread. And put a good 90 degree bend into the fritz and then tie it down. Trim away the excess. A bit of wax. Make sure it's tied down. You'll see it's a bit rough looking just now, but what you do is just simply get your Velcro. This will bring out some of the fine straggle fibres as well as the hackle. It'll swim extremely well. It's just, by doing this, you're forming, as I said, you're forming your rib, a bit of flash and a body, and protecting your, your hackle at the same time. So it makes for a very robust fly. So it'll last a few fish. Now, depending on the style of the front you want to finish off with, I'm using one of the the dyed rump feathers. Just it's like an ext just to thicken it up round the throat. This is the rump feather, which originally on the on the on the skin it's actually yellow. So it's been dyed red. You get this nice this nice colour. Yeah, I'm just going to tie it in the same way I tied in the, the body, the body hackle. Just break that tip off. And then just form your throat, or your front hackle in this case. All the way around. This point here. Ninth degree bend into the hackle. Make sure you've got a wee bit of wax on your thread to give you all the grip you need. And there we are. Now that's a good fly in itself, really. So it is. I'm just going to brush the fibres with the, the Velcro just to get it to sit where I want. Then, for the wing, I'm going to use, in this case, this is some dyed golden pheasant tippet. It's dyed orange. I want it right to the back. Basically the tips here in line with the back of the, the tag. Now at times I just roll this back and forward within my fingers which basically brings the fibres on the side on the top, both sides get the length and then come in, catch it in. Now you, want, you don't want it too heavy, you don't want too much of it. And again just come in and trim that away. Tidy up. Now on the golden pheasant skins, as I said, there's actually the rump feathers, and they're there, there. Now, sometimes you get this, and this skin, you'll see the yellow still on the rump feather, but the tips have got that red. Now these make excellent, it makes excellent feathers to use in any fly, because very, it's a very good colour. Now, I'm just going to a couple of stronger ones. Now I need a couple of these. And all I'm going to do is lay these on the top. And you'll see how strong that colour is. Just take away the fluff from either side. And then you want them again much to the back. Just the end of the tips, just slightly by. Now I like to tie in some of the fibres. 
there's a couple of loose turns there just to get the position where I want. Now you see much like a just like a golden fit, like a general practitioner, sorry. Just the same sort of idea. Here we are. Trim away the waist. Now you could finish again, you could finish it that, and it's still a nice fly. I mean, that's nothing wrong with that fly. As it is just now. But what I'm going to do is I've got two jungle cock eyes. Now, if you look at these feathers, if you imagine, you see they've got a natural, they're curving away from one another. You're seeing the underside. Now what I've done here is I've taken a feather from the left side of the, the cape and one from the right side. So you've got this natural curve. Now I'm going to offer these, get the length I want first. Which is just hackle length, see. Just look at it and line them up. Open out the area where you're going to tie them in. I like to keep some of the fibres there, so. And then you just offer them on the sides. Instead of, like, fold them up into the wing and fold them down into the, the hackle. And then once you're happy with just bring them into the side. Again, there's two or three loose turns of a thread there. Where you can actually move or get these to sit where you want. And again, you can have them slightly different lengths. Just to the end of the body. Make sure they're both the same length. That looks okay. And then, but wax onto your thread. For security, I always like, to, if I can, I'll fold these back. So they'll never pull out, they've got to break off. And then, tidy the head up. Just come in. Even if you've got to run up and down a couple of times with the thread, just to cover everything up and do that. And then it's just a matter of keeping the thread tight. And then three or four turns of finish. And you can break these off. Turn away the thread. And as you can see it makes a really nice a nice pattern. That looks okay. Then, how I varnish the fly. Super glue first. Now you've got to be careful, you don't want to touch the feathers. All the way around. And this basically glues the head solid. And once that's dry, I mean the head you've got is what you're going to get, that nice shiny head. Now if that dries in a short time, then all I do is Basically, varnish over the top and that's it. Yeah, that's you. Finished. Don't need to do any more. Now you see that nice shape? So easy to tie. Now you can, I mean here's a, a blue charm version. Without the jungle cock. And uh, go into the sort of Green Highlander style. Again, same, it's a golden pheasant body skin. I've used in that, in this case I've just used it on the black. But it's just a normal hackle in front. So it's, it's a very simple tying, very easy to do. Once that's in the water it swims extremely well. So Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And basically that's your Red Devil Spade.